With 25 million people in the country and only 30,000 vehicles on the road, North Korea has the lowest rate of car ownership on Earth. This is largely due to the restriction on importing vehicles and other luxury goods, which begs the question, how and where do they get their cars? The country, known by many as the Hermit Kingdom, tends not to be forthcoming with information or hardly allow anything into the country. While ruler Kim Jong-un bans the importation of automobiles, the national economy has provided an automotive industry within the country. The motor industry in North Korea has a much lower production than in South Korea, with most of the other vehicle production focused on military and industrial goals, including construction. Only a small number of citizens own cars. Only a couple of household names are found on the nation's roads, Toyota being one of them despite trade restrictions preventing manufacturers from selling their cars there. There are also many 70s Volvos on its roads. This is from a single shipment of 1,000 Volvo 144s that the country allegedly skipped the bill on years ago. North Korea is not involved in the OICA or any other United Nations Industrial Committee, so information about its motor vehicle industry is limited. However, a few observers with first-hand knowledge reported that the state has the capacity to produce 40,000 to 50,000 vehicles a year. The North Korean automobile industry began during the Soviet era, with the Soviet Union helping to build automotive plants in the country. As a result, the country's first domestically produced automobiles were copies of Soviet designs, such as the Gaz-51 MIDI truck, the Gaz-69 off-road four-wheel drive vehicle, and the Gaz M20 Pabida passenger car. Nowadays, there are only about seven major production companies, with each focusing on a particular form of vehicle. One of them is Sungri Motor Plants, which has been North Korea's first and largest motor vehicle plant since the 1950s, producing urban and off-road passenger cars as well as small, medium, and heavy cargo, haulage, construction, and off-road trucks. Buses too. All models are reported to be replicas of foreign cars, with their vehicles being made generally for civilian and commercial use. On the other hand, government officials favor foreign imports, and the armed forces have their own facilities. We'll talk about that later. As previously stated, Sungri Motor Plant was the first in the country, starting production in 1958. Twenty years later, annual production was reported by the government to be 20,000 units per year, but the rate was more likely 6,000 to 7,000 units. Fast forward to 1996, production was crippled by the country's economic difficulties, with as little as 150 units produced. It used to be the most efficient motor plant in the automotive industry before being surpassed by Pyonghua Motors. Founded in 2000, they generally sell small luxury cars, minivans, SUVs, and pickup trucks under license. Apart from making their own cars, Pyonghua has the exclusive rights to purchase and sale of used cars in North Korea. Most citizens, however, are unable to own cars for several reasons, and because the country's market is so small, Pyonghua's output is reportedly very low. For example, in 2003, just 314 vehicles were produced, even though the factory could build up to 10,000 a year. While those companies account for the production of small vehicles, trucks, SUVs, and luxury cars, you tend to wonder what the masses who can't afford these cars use. Certain companies also specialize in making trolleybuses and trams. These companies include Chongjin Bus Works, Pyongyang Trolley Bus Factory, and Kim Jong Tai Locomotive Works. Being a closed country, North Korea prevents any interaction with the outside world, making modernization and advancement difficult for these companies. The lack of competition doesn't help their case as well, as this doesn't spur them to make developments to their original designs. According to some defectors, Car makers in the country often use a procedure called anatomy plan drawing, which simply means drawing up automotive designs by importing a foreign car and disassembling the vehicle piece by piece to sketch the design and copy it. This, however, only applies to cars produced for civilians. The leaders of the country, on the other hand, choose to ride in imported luxury cars usually from high-end companies such as Toyota and Mercedes. According to the defectors, Mercedes-Benz are the de facto government vehicle, and the higher your position, the better the model. With the number of important people, mostly military personnel, making up only about 5% of the population, their use of imported vehicles shows a lack of confidence in their own country's production. Take Supreme Leader, or in other words, dictator Kim Jong-un, for example. He has been seen in vehicles that are definitely not like those produced in his country. He reportedly owns an Audi R8, Range Rover, Rolls-Royce, and more. 
His carcade includes an armored black limousine and some Mercedes, including a Maybach S62 and Maybach S600 Pullman Guard, costing $500,000 to $1.6 million each. And Mr. Kim uses them in open defiance of United Nations sanctions intended to ban luxury goods from North Korea. That being said, it's difficult to really tell what the future holds for this peculiar country. However, if the automotive industry is any indication, nothing will be changing anytime soon. North Korea may open itself up to the world in the future, but until then, we can only largely speculate about what's built in those automotive factories. At least they're not like Dubai, which still hands out the death penalty for some car-related crime. Click here to learn more about this story.